Welcome. I'm Christopher Lyon, Editor-in-Chief of Prestel Publishing here in New York. I'm here today with the artist Judy Chicago and the art historian Francis Borzello to discuss their new book, Frida Kahlo Face to Face. Judy, this book was uh, conceived as an encounter between a leading feminist artist, yourself, and an icon among women artists, Frida Kahlo. But from the beginning, you decided that you wanted to bring in Francis. And the book became something more. It became a dialogue between you and Francis, not always in agreement. Uh, can you tell us how this came about? Well, the reason I wanted to involve Francis was that it was really important to have an art historian to provide a certain kind of context and background, because I was going to have a sort of personal encounter with Callow's work. Even though Callow's uh, work has been looked at extensively in terms of her self-portraits, they have not, it has not been looked at in terms of the history of female self-portraiture, which is an area of Francis's expertise. In fact, that's how I met her, through her book, Seeing Ourselves, which is a history of female self-portraiture. And I found it very curious when we first began to look at uh, Callow's overall body of art, that even though she had done 40 still lifes, which is, constitutes a little less than a quarter of her production, those were way less known than her um, self-portraiture. In fact, people sort of only think of her in her self-portraiture. And so those were particular areas I thought Frances could illuminate uh, Callow's work in a new way. And so when we did that, we discovered that, for example, there was a suggestion that uh, not only did she do all these still life paintings that needed to be looked at in relationship to the history of the ways in which women subverted the still life tradition in order to make a place for themselves when there was very little place for themselves. That's an area of scholarship that was missing. She very early on understood the creation of a persona that she wasn't exactly no, she could change who she was by what she wore. Our study of Callow points out a lack of scholarship in a, in a variety of mm. areas because mm. once we looked at her mm. overall body of art and we looked at the themes in that body of art that were way beyond how she's been approached where in most of the books all the themes get mixed up and there's no attempt to separate these and look at them in a multiplicity of ways. Not only did she do all these still life paintings that needed to be looked at in relationship to the history of the ways in which women subverted the still life, that's an area of scholarship that was missing. When we looked at uh, her use of dolls, and then we realized there were a lot of women artists who had used dolls in their work. And then when we looked at her work in terms of her portraits of herself with animals, and that we started to look at that in relationship to other women artists who had focused on animals like Rosa Bonheur, again, we found an area where there mm -hmm. had been no scholarship, no art historical uh, uh, questioning that left huge voids in terms of being able to understand Frida Kahlo's work. There's been absence of scholarship on women artists, absence of focus on their whole bodies of art, absence of scholarship on areas that are rich with our historical uh, potential. Mm -hmm. And there has been a void. I think it's very interesting. When you, when you, when you say about the lack of scholarship on women and still, still life, for example, I can think of articles, but the, I suppose you're absolutely right. It's because there has been a tradition of seeing Carlo through her biography. Mm -hmm that somehow she's almost seen as an illustrator of her life. Right. It diminishes her agency. Well, it, dim it, it diminishes, I love the way you say that, diminishes her agency. That's exactly what it does. Which means it diminishes her 
skill as an artist, doesn't it? That's what well, we're talking the, about. Yeah, yeah, well, one of the points that, yeah. we, you know, I, I tried to make in the book mm -hmm. is this uh, approach to women, you know, about this approach to women artists through their biography and their relationships with male figures mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Callow in relationship to Diego Rivera, mm -hmm. O'Keefe in relationships to, to Stieglitz. And then this tendency to discuss Callow's work you know, oh well, she did this painting when she got, when she painted herself with animals when she was angry at Diego Rivera. She painted this painting when she was upset with something he had done. And one of the points I make is that, you know, imagine doing a book about Jackson Pollock in which his paintings are discussed as reactions to things that happened in his marriage and relationship with Lee Krasner. It's completely unthinkable. And yet, Art historians have seemed to have had no problem in doing that with women artists. Well, excuse me? God, you're scary when you get like this. <laughs> well, um, it makes, me, um, really, so, it makes so, me really upset. Well, it's, yeah, I'm being judicious here. <laughs> yes, but um, you do have a point. Well, you're right. Um, but there are, there are artists like Picasso. Increasingly, there's been exhibitions called Picasso and His Women. And they is a whole way of looking at Picasso, which is that you look at the late paintings with all the sort of spikes and the angles, and it's all to do with him getting fed up with some woman in his life. The trouble is women seem to get one crack. Right. I mean, how many books, how many exhibitions on Monet are there? Hundreds and hundreds. Carlo actually is an exception. Yes, absolutely. There's been tons and tons and tons on Carlo, but you cannot get away from that biography. I think that the book suggests whole new avenues of approach to Callow. I hope people will build on what we have tried to open up. Also, Callow as a precursor of the feminist art movement mm -hmm. in terms of opening up areas of subject matter that then younger women artists have taken and male artists have taken and opened up, you know, the construction of identity in terms of how that opened up a whole area that both male and female artists have been exploring. I mean, I just like to see, if there are going to be new books on Frida Kahlo, I just like to see new books on Frida Kahlo. In other words, new looks. We have tried to suggest all the way through that she was a very interesting artist. You know, without sort of going overboard and saying she's wonderful, we've tried to show how she was a good artist. It, what made her special? And, and, la about that. and lastly, I would say that in, in the launch at the Brooklyn Museum of the book, um, I got a lot of feedback after our dialogue about how refreshing it was for people to hear us disagree, you know, amiably and respectfully, instead of this kind of uh, monolithic art historical voice booming in the darkness, you know, like from Zeus giving down the pronouncements in the dark.